Well, good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome uh, to you all this morning, and a special uh, greeting to those of us who are uh, joining in our uh, live streamed uh, uh, version of this worship service. I direct your attention now to the order of service that you have, and uh, as we join together in worshipping our Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. We sing as our doxology uh, to him who chose us first. before God now in our prayer of approach and of adoration. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, glory to you who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. To you, all your people, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, cry aloud with joyful voice and say, Glory be to you, O God, the Saviour of all, forever and ever. We're singing again now to God's praise uh, in the hymn, In Christ Alone My Heart is Found. Oh, my God. 
we come before God now in our prayer of confession and of supplication, but it's all pray. God, most merciful and gracious, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another. We have forsaken the path of life, transgressed your holy commandments, and grieved your Holy Spirit. Forgive and cleanse us, we pray, and grant us courage, insight, and a deeper faith that we may more truly serve and follow you. Let your mercy come upon us in great fullness, even as our sins against you have been many. We pray that you will let your forgiving love overflow all our transgressions, that they may be covered and blotted out, and we be purified unto newness of life for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. O Lord, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding you we may love you, and loving you we may hate those sins from which you have redeemed us for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose words we further pray as our Lord himself taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, may be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the glory, for and ever. Amen. We turn to hear from God's word. And uh, I invite you to follow uh, the passage from Jeremiah chapter 6. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you, saying, Pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not pay attention. Therefore hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what will happen to them. Hear, O earth, behold, I am bringing disaster upon this people, the fruit of their devices, because they have not paid attention to my words, and, as for my law, they have rejected it. What use to me is frankincense that comes from Sheba or sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices pleasing to me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will lay before this people stumbling blocks against which they shall stumble, fathers and sons together, neighbour and friend shall perish. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people is coming from the north country. The great nation is stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold on bow and javelin. And they are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like a roaring sea. And they ride on horses, set in array, as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Zion. Well, may God bless to our understanding that first reading from his holy word. We sing again for the praise of God in the hymn, When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries. <laughs> Oh. 
we turn again to read from God's Word, and uh, I invite you to read the responsive uh, sections in italics uh, in these passages from the Gospels of Matthew and John. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone who the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house I am in <coughs> If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. I will say to you, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you <laughs> do know him and have seen him. Well, may God add his blessings to those further readings from his holy word, and to his name be the praise and the glory. Amen. Jeremiah 6.16, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. In 1996, Harvard scholar Oscar Handlin stated the following in an article called The Unmarked Way. At some point midway into the 20th century, people in the West discovered that they had lost all sense of direction. Formerly, familiar markers along the way had guided their personal and social lives from birth to maturity to death. Now disorientated, they no longer trusted the guideposts and they groped in bewilderment towards an unimagined destination. Wandering in the dark, men and women in all Western societies, stumbling blindly along, strained in vain for glimpses of recognisable landmarks. Jeremiah would have said the same about his times. People had lost all sense of direction. They were disoriented. They groped in bewilderment, bewilderment and walked in and wandered in the dark. They needed a landmark, so Jeremiah gave them one. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. This is a verse for all people of all ages who have come to the crossroads and do not know which way to turn. Australia, the whole Western world, stands at the crossroads, desperately seeking a landmark and yet rejecting the obvious. Standing at the crossroads, what must nations and their people do? The first thing to recognise is that they are, that we are at the crossroads for, for, and to realise what it is. Look around, get your bearings. You've come to a fork in the road. The people of God often found themselves at the crossroads. The children of Israel were at the crossroad 
when they gathered in Shechem. Joshua was about to die and said, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the God your forefathers worship beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Amen. Would the people recognise in Joshua's time that they were at the crossroads and would they choose wisely? The people of God were at the crossroads when Elijah confronted Baal on Mount Carmel. It was the same crossroads the people faced at the end of Joshua's life, offering the same two choices, God's way or the highway. Elijah said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Western civilization stands at the crossroads. We may have started down the road to destruction, but the way of life still stretches out before us. The ethical dilemmas we face show that we are at the crossroads. Will we cherish the lives of the innocent or will we permit abortion on demand? Will we protect the lives of the defenceless or will we allow involuntary euthanasia? Will we allow the destruction of God's way in relationships, in the gender issues and so on? Will we preserve the sanctity of marriage or will we tolerate no-fault divorces and homosexual unions? Will we love the true and the beautiful or will we gaze upon images of sex and violence? Will we serve the one true God or allow him to be replaced by useless and destructive idols centred on people's foolish wisdom? These are the questions a culture faces at the crossroads. Do we see the crackdown on individual freedom and rights as bringing us as a nation to the crossroads? But do we as a nation even recognise that we are at a crossroads? Will Australia choose wisely? Will you choose wisely? The evangelical church today is also standing at the crossroads. Will we glorify God in our worship or will we simply entertain ourselves? Will we bear witness to the law of God and the grace of the gospel, or will we tone down our message so that we don't offend anyone? Will we faithfully teach the eternal word of God, or will we seek some new revelation that will not offend people? Will we defend the doctrine of justification by faith alone? Or will we add works to grace and give people a good feeling in that they can, yes, earn their own salvation? These are the questions a church faces when it stands at the crossroads. But does the church even recognise that she is standing at the crossroads? Will the church choose wisely? Perhaps you are at a personal crossroad. The world looks so inviting. It's so much easier to go along with everyone else. Why should I bother about God's way? Why should I worry about what the Bible teaches? Others contemplate a change of career or the pursuit of a new educational opportunity. But so often these are done for all the wrong reasons. Maybe it's to get further up the social ladder, to earn more money, to have more power or prestige. 
an opportunity perhaps to break from following God in his ways. Still others wrestle with deep spiritual questions, wondering who Jesus Christ is. Was he in fact a historical person? Did he in fact suffer and die for me? Or is the Bible really true? Or is it, as the atheists continue to maintain, it's a book of fairy tales? Or you may be facing the personal crossroad of whether you should worship every Sunday. What does it really mean to be a Christian in my marriage? Should it make a difference? Will I stand firm in Christ or as a young teen or young adult, do I give in to the pressures of the world? and allow my friends, the world, to shape my thinking, my decision-making, and all that I do. If you are at the crossroads, do you in fact recognise that you are there? Will you choose wisely? The thing to do at such times is to recognise that you are standing at the crossroads and God is talking to you. Two roads stretch before you. You can go in only one of two directions. Which will you take? How will you decide? Your destiny, your eternal destiny, depends upon which road you take. The second step after acknowledging that you are at the crossroads is to ask for directions. When a nation, a church, or an individual comes to a crossroads, it helps to have good road signs, good directions, and a good map. Jeremiah tells what kind of directions to get. Ask for the ancient paths, he said. Ask where the good way is. In Jeremiah's day, people liked to travel on ancient pathways. Pedestrians wanted to follow a well-established route. In the wilderness, it is best to walk on well-beaten paths that have been trampled on by many feet over many years. When Jeremiah says to ask for the ancient paths, he is telling us to walk here and now according to the word of God. The ancient path is the biblical path. The good way is clearly marked out in the scriptures, in God's word, the Bible. The Lord goes on to explain that the problem with the people of Jerusalem is that they have not listened to my words and they have rejected my law. In other words, they had made a bad choice at the crossroads. And the reason they made a bad choice is that they had rejected God's word. They had not asked for direction. The people of God did exactly the opposite of what the psalmist recommends. Psalm 119, that very long psalm, is all about walking in the ancient ways of God's word. It starts out like this. Blessed, blessed are they whose ways are blameless. Who are blameless? Who walk according to the law of the Lord. Staying on track in life means going down the biblical path, not the world's ways, not your friend's ways, not the cultural ways. The Bible must always be what leads, what guides, what nourishes and determines the way that we should go. The psalmist loved, read, meditated on, and prayed through God's word. When was the last time you picked up the Bible, read it, and meditated on it, and allowed God to speak to you? I trust we're all listening. God is talking to you. And as the psalmist did all those things, he discovered that the Bible is like a smooth pathway for a difficult journey. The ancient path, the good way, is the biblical way. 
Jeremiah's advice for people at the crossroads is to walk in the ancient path of biblical faith. Jeremiah, I believe, is also referring to how we interpret and understand the Word of God, the Bible. He is also referring to sound theology, interpreting the Bible God's way, not the world's way, and not the way that you want the Bible to read and to say. Other Christians have walked down the ancient path of the Bible and they can show us the way. They're recorded in that um, Hebrews chapter of um, those who willingly gave their lives in the cause of God. It is possible to trace a straight pathway from the prophets and apostles to Augustine of Hippo and uh, Calvin was... Um, very influenced by the teaching of Augustine because it was biblical and true teaching. Also Martin Luther, down to John Calvin, to the Puritans, and even to the defenders um, of the faith in modern times. These are the teachers and pastors in the church who have placed themselves under the authority of God's word, and they have testified to the sovereignty of God of God's grace in salvation. They maintain the glory of God as their chief end, the scriptures of the Old and New Testament as their only authority, not the media, not social media, not what you think or what they thought, but what the Bible taught and the righteousness of Christ received by faith as their only hope. Anyone who follows them as they followed scripture, have found the good way. Theological author, orthodoxy, or being true to the Bible, believing the Bible to be the word of God, sounds old-fashioned today. How many times have you probably heard someone say, the Bible is out of date? Or others have even said, it's obsolete. It has nothing to say to us in this day and age. But Bible-based theology never goes out of date, no matter what the world says. We are told we have to get with the times, aren't we? You know, people today can't believe in the virgin birth, so you leave that out of the Bible. People can't believe in miracles, Jesus turning um, five fishes and two loaves to feed 5,000 people or more. They reject certainly the resurrection of Christ. Dead men don't come alive again. And to deny all of those is to destroy Christianity completely. When you deny the essentials, you deny the rest of what the Bible teaches. And therefore it is no wonder that people today see abortion as okay. It is no wonder that they see same-sex union as okay. It's no wonder that young people and others believe that it's that you try before you buy, that is, couples living together without committing to marriage, that that's okay. It's no wonder that people believe to have sex whenever you are with someone of the opposite sex is okay. Don't worry what the Bible teaches about marriage. It's obsolete. It's out of date. Don't worry about the value of life. Don't worry about the responsibility to guard your own body from sin. And so we hear of churches compromising with the world. They will have nothing to do with the word sin. To be holy as God is holy, the word holy becomes a swear word. Opposing abortion and same-sex union as being a fanatic. For novel experience, go to the church that follows the latest fad. But novelty is the very enemy of true of the true teaching of the Bible, the very opposite to truth and absolutes. It is much better to go where the eternal word of God is preached and faithfully applied to contemporary culture and the living church. Recognise that you are at a crossroads. 
and then ask for direction. Ask for the ancient paths, he said. Ask where the good way is. Follow God's way, the Bible way. Be obedient to his word, the ancient paths, the good way. The ancient path, the good way, is the teaching of Scripture. It is the true teaching, and it is also Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Those who seek the ancient path and the good way must have Jesus Christ at the centre of everything. Jesus told his disciples that he was going um, back to his father's house to prepare a place for them. He promised he would come back to take them there also. He told them they knew the pathway to the place where he was going. But the disciples were so confused. They were not quite sure what Jesus was talking about. Frankly, they still didn't know the way. They could sense they were standing at a crossroads, however, and they knew they needed better directions. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, what did he answer? Oh, we can do better than that. What did he answer? No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the ancient way and the good way. And he is the only way. Jesus is the only way to God, the only way to salvation, and the only way to eternal life. Australia is at the crossroads. We must pray that our government would seek the ancient and the good way, the way of the Bible, the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must pray that Jesus and his word will be honoured in our parliaments. The church must become like the prophets of old. But sadly, the church often runs 100 <coughs> k per hour in the opposite direction. But the church... <coughs> must become like the prophets of old and loudly declare, thus says the Lord, standing at the crossroads, the church must declare to the nation's leaders, this is the way, govern accordingly, or face God's judgment. Dear friend, are you standing at the crossroads? Culturally, perhaps, do your present actions and beliefs conflict with the Bible? Your culture may say that it's okay to marry more than one wife, but the Bible says no, one man, one woman, until death parts you. Your culture may teach that it's okay to be separated from your wife and family for long periods of time. The Bible says no, husband and wives are to give themselves to each other constantly and together be a father and mother, parents to their children. The culture of the day may, see that, may say that free sex is okay. Do what you like, when you like. The Bible says no. To make love is for married couples alone. Committed to a lifelong relationship. Choose the biblical way, the ancient way. To love Jesus means to obey his word. Are you at the crossroads church-wise? Satan says, you don't have to go to church. You can worship at home, etc., etc." The Bible says, no, not true. Hebrews says, not to forsake. In other words, not to forget about worship, as some people do. God has instituted the church for our growing in and learning the Christian faith, to encourage one another to walk in the way of Christ. You want to leave the church because someone has hurt you in what they said? The Bible says no. You don't leave for that reason at all. You forgive. And if you are the cause of the pain, you apologise in the name of Christ. You want to leave the church because the truth is preached, because your sin is exposed, and you are challenged to love Christ before anything and anyone else? 
The Bible says, no, you don't leave the church for that reason. Instead, you repent of your sin. You choose the ancient pathway, the better way. Are you at the crossroads personally? You feel God doesn't exist, that he doesn't answer your prayers. Your spouse may have walked out on you. You are suffering pain. Nothing seems to be going right for you. Your children will have nothing to do with Jesus. You want to throw it all away. The Bible says, no, you don't walk away from Jesus. What you do is you counteract Satan's lies by hanging onto God's infallible and authoritative truth. Stand on the promises that God gives you and keep your eyes fixed on the one who has made you, who has redeemed you, who has given his son to die for you. Remember, you are not running the spiritual race alone. The enemy may be strong, but never forget that our God is always stronger. Everything you're going through right now, whether it's good or bad, God will use for a distinct purpose, for God's glory and for your spiritual growth. God wastes nothing. God can change that person that you're concerned with or who may be hurting you. God can help you through any situation. You choose the ancient pathway. Choose the better way. Choose Jesus Christ. Whether you're at the crossroads culturally, church-wise, spiritually or personally, what you need is to take hold of the truth of the Bible, of sound teaching and theology, and, of course, that you have that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that you truly love him with the whole of your being, that by the Holy Spirit you will allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in that ancient pathway, the way that is good and right, the way of God's word. Choose the ancient pathway, the better way. Those who walk in the ancient path and the good way will find rest for their souls, that peace and joy which the world cannot give. It is only in Christ that you will find a true purpose for your life and for your living and, of course, that it will lead you to eternity, to the new heavens and the new earth. People today are restless. They are guilt-ridden. They will turn to anything and everything in order to find that rest and peace. But it is only Jesus Christ who is able to give that to them, to give to them what the world cannot give. Jesus Christ is the ancient, the good, the restful and peaceful way in Christ there is rest for the soul. In Christ there is eternity. In Christ there is a purpose for living. Dear friends, choose Christ at the crossroads. Let us pray. Oh Lord, just forgive our foolish ways. Forgive our nation that it has chosen the wrong way. We pray that you'll forgive those who make laws that take us in the wrong way. Forgive us too when we have not spoken out, when we have not lived, choosing the ancient pathways, the pathway that is good, not choosing Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth and the life. Father, we wonder why our lives fall apart. We wonder why our marriages fall apart. We wonder why our family falls apart. Because we have stood at the crossroads and we have chosen the wrong way. Lord, forgive us. Thank you that there is a right way, the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Clearly revealed to us in the Bible. Help us to read the Bible, to love the Bible, to understand the Bible and to live by it.
because it is the ancient pathway, the way that is right. Lord, help us now to see that Jesus Christ alone is the way, the truth, and the life, that standing at the crossroads, we will choose the ancient paths, the way that is good and that brings blessing to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All hail the power of Jesus' name and remain seated as you will be waited upon for your tithes and offerings. And as you bring those tithes and offerings, remember what God has done for you. He has given his all. And all that you have belongs to God. So give generously, give lovingly, and give sacrificially. of others, of what they have, we who spend more than what we should on things for ourselves, 
We have approached this offering with less than joy, perhaps even thinking what I'll have to do without. And we come before you now with a mind less, a mind that is not at peace. And so we ask that you'll forgive our selfish ways, that we may give with generosity, allowing this money to be more for you and for others than it is to us, to be used more for the work of your kingdom than for our own selfish purposes. Help us to be much more faithful in our giving, much more joyful, much more generous than we have in the past. Receive, therefore, these our gifts to the glory of your name. O gracious, most merciful Father, your word reminds us that we are called into the world and yet not to be of the world. We are to follow the ancient, ancient pathways, the pathway that is good. And so we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray, Father, that where error and heresy is kept into the church, that, Father, you would raise up those who will speak against it, that the church would be cleansed from all of the, this heresy and that truth and righteousness will prevail. We pray that the church will be cleansed from all false teaching, from all sinful practices, from all false pastors. We commit to you our own church in this land and our own church here. We pray that we will be kept faithful and true and that through the faithful preaching and the faithful living of your people, many will see you and come to know the Lord Jesus. We pray, Father, um, for those who are not well, and we ask your healing hand upon them. We pray for Hugh. We pray for Rebecca's sister in Sudan. We pray for Sunday that you will continue to bring healing strength to his body. Father, we pray for any others. We pray for Lynn Bond. We pray for any others too that we name in our hearts that you would graciously, yes, bring about spiritual healing and also physical healing. Father, we pray that, the, that we might live for you in this coming week. We pray for families, especially those represented here. We know, Father, the pressures that each family faces, the pressures of the world to turn to idols, to turn to materialism, to turn to consumerism, all the time buying, hoping that that will bring peace and contentment. Of course, it does the very opposite. Help us all to choose the right way the ancient pathways for your ways, obeying your word, loving your word, are the only ways to bring about that peace and joy and the assurance of being with you for all eternity. Yes, we do commit to you all who govern and rule, our king, the government, that they would so govern as to encourage the keeping of your commandments and the hindering of evil. Hear these our prayers and so inspired by your spirit and strengthened us by your grace to be a faithful and obedient people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now thank we all our God.
May the blessing of God be upon you. The mercy of God abide with you. The Spirit of God direct you. The peace of God fill you. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who died and rose again and will yet return, receive his own into everlasting glory. Thank you.